Welcome everybody to a uh, regular meeting of council for October the 15th, 2024, which I'll bring to order. Result the agenda for the October 15th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councilor Medwood, can you hear us? She's gone. Hmm. We'll give it a minute and see if she can reconnect. Said she's re trying to reconnect. Is there nothing? There's nothing on your end that you need to do, is there? Yeah. No. It's an open meeting. Resolved: The minutes of the October the first, two thousand twenty-four regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by. Councillor Powell, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Um, the reception or the delegation of Staff Sergeant Henson is not going to happen tonight. He texted me earlier telling me that he something has come up and he isn't unable to, so we will have to reschedule. So we'll move down to uh, communications 6.1. Resolve the response letter from the Honorable Randy Bosno, Bosno, Federal Minister of Employment, Workplace Development and Official Languages dated October the 2nd, 2024 be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Maybe anything on that? Uh, CO pool as far as what prompted that? Uh, yeah, the federal government cut the training uh, funding from the province. Uh, so that was the, the main gist. The Minister of Labor got a hold of us to ask if we would send a letter, and this is the response. <clears throat> and does the response suffice to what you are hoping to hear from? Uh, they're, they're not going to reinstate the, the dollars, so no. But, uh, you know, this was, this was done in support of the provincial initiative. When, when you sent this letter, I, I don't see that there, but did you uh, copy the AMM on that? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay. And did you have a chance at all to speak with the president of the AMM at the time about that? Uh, no they can go through the FCM on that as well. So if that's something that you really feel that we need to do, I would actually try to tackle with it with the interim uh, President Valentino. Um, okay. Councillor Powell. Oh. oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Medwood, are you connected with us now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, perfect. Okay, we are on the agenda. We waited for a few minutes, but we're now on uh, six uh, six point two. Result of building permits forty nine twenty four. Oh, I'm not that far ahead. What am I doing here? 
Excuse Sorry, we're on 6.2. Right, 6.2. Um, Councillor Midwood, were you saying something there? Because I it was breaking up. Result the building permits 4924 through 5124 with a total estimated value of $523,000 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bovic. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, just a compliment to those individuals who are making those uh, improvements to our community or additions to our community for $523,000 with a commitment to. That which is happening in the Swan River Valley, and I, I thank them for participating. <coughs> um, in the future, trying to uh, frame your uh, response or your question to a question. Uh, anything further? All in favor? It's carried. Seven, seven point one. So it feels like something's missing here, but. Result of the Director of Public Works report <coughs> received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor White. This is the status of the uh, caretaker, uh, cemetery caretaker job description. I sort of thought that was happening a while back. Yeah, so I repaired or prepared the uh, cemetery caretaker position job description, and then I had a meeting with the union to go over that, and then if we can agree on a wage, uh, which is in the CBA, then it will be presented to council uh, what the wage would be in the job description, and then if council agrees to it, uh, either by passing the budget the resolution to approve it, then we'd sign a letter of understanding with the union for the position with the job description, and then whenever the CBA is finalized, that letter would just get attached to it. Deputy Mayor Morio. A convoluted process, but necessary. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Morio. Oh, yeah, under the landfill, it says meeting with demolition contractor regarding liquid waste. That was from the fire at. Uh, From with inside the building? Yeah, okay, I got you now. I was just trying to make that connection. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Bollock. Uh, just uh, looking at here with Centennial Drive, I do believe that between the lines here, but to me, it's not going to happen this year. No, no, it'll be uh, a tender will be created from AB because we didn't get any uh, responses this year, and then it'll be issued for like January, February for next year. Okay, so I guess my next question is, what was budgeted for that job? Uh, just give me a second. Roughly. Uh, it was a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, just wondering if that would be something that we could move that money towards the landfill to create the burns that are needed. Uh, well, that money's coming out of the utility reserve, so it would just go from okay. the utility reserve next year. Okay, further discussion? Go ahead. Just one other thing, I just uh, going through some of my notes and had some spare time. On the lagoon, we're looking to hire a company to look for a certain type of soil for that. Yeah. For that. I just, my thoughts, and again, these are my personal opinions, is that have we exhausted working with our neighbors to do a regional lagoon before we go and take a step towards that? And I guess my reasoning behind that would be that we seem to go ahead and do things and then stick our hand out for money. Uh, are we exhausted in speaking with them about this? Looking at the location, it looks like it's further to the west um, it, for the potential sources. So definitely, if it is further to the west, we could reach out to the needle and see if they'd be interested in pumping to it, if those locations end up having decent soil. 
I think that some of that conversation, I think we should defer that to a, a time when we're, uh, you know, in, in a committee or into in uh, camera. That's because there is some uh, some items of negotiation and discussion that goes beyond uh, sitting at this table right now. Okay, just one, yeah, just one other comment, just with this study that's going to go on. I do believe, my memory could be incorrect, but I do these, believe these studies were done long ago. There was testing done all over the valley. I just don't know where you might be able to find that. I can maybe track down a little more where that was done. But there was, it was done probably 20 years ago. These tests were all done. I'll try to get a little bit more information. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Oh, sorry uh, for your information, uh, Councillor Medwood, uh, while you were not connected. Um, uh, Staff Sergeant Hanson is not able to do his uh, uh, meeting with us tonight. He had to defer it for another uh, evening. Uh, back to the resolution. Resolve that the uh, Protective Services report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, I see that we've got like a, a starlight now to uh, for backup communication and cannot connectivity. Um, so I fair to say that we're going to be cancelling the uh, sat phone um, subscription that's we're never ever used in yeah. the connects and those two should offset each other in cost yes okay. go ahead Councillor Boychuk Further to that, I, I had noticed that purchase of that Starlink as well, and wondering if that's something that we can look at at the recreation department, seeing as there was the issues there, and it looked like what was it, six hundred and something for the initial, and I don't know, might be if you think it's got the. <coughs> I've been thinking about it, but yeah. I'm sorry. Thinking about it, but I needed to find more information. I was kind of waiting for this. Happen and see well, the we'll, cost and stuff. We'll let involved. recreation have that conversation. We'll stick to the uh, resolution. Yep. Anything further? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Oh, sorry, CFO Ganita, I missed you there, but go ahead. We just got charged another 200 dollars for something to do with Starlink. I haven't received the invoice yet. It just showed up on the visa. So I'm not sure if that means it's going to cost $200 a month. Mm -hmm. Probably will be in that range. Okay. Moving on then to... Where are we here? 7.3. Result of the September 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Councillor Boycha, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 7.4 uh, reports. We'll start with Councillor White. Okay, pretty busy as, as usual. Uh, October 7th, uh, we had our, our G4 meeting hosted by Mountain, and uh, it was really a fruitful evening from the perspective of a lot of people. A lot of the councillors spoke their mind candidly, and uh, if there were a, a theme that was impressed upon me, is it wasn't at 151,000 uh, needles. In fact, uh, the PMH numbers were almost a half a million needles were spread. So a lot of discussion took about how many people could be using a million needles in three years. So we're looking for solutions there. And October 9th, we, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, myself, and Reed Bierman met with uh, Dr. Ola and looked at the possibility of trying to establish incentives for international medical graduates. And we were touching base with uh, Dr. Burnside. We're looking at some options. 
and we're going to try to design a, uh, some sort of a series of incentives for those people, and uh, hopefully that will work out. And on October the 10th, we had the PMH meeting, which uh, was, was invited, we were invited as members of the councils. So it wasn't a public meeting, which disappointed me a little. I mean, that one million needles in three years just jumped out at me. And it appears PMH is going to try to reach back to us to not have the community pick up the needles, maybe the establishment of uh, boxes where those needles can be put in. I'm, I'm a little uh, skeptical on that. I'll stay optimistic, but I have a difficulty of, uh, believing that will work. So discussions are continuing. PMH has told us, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morial may elaborate, that they're considering having a public meeting, which I would be quite disappointed if that didn't happen, where we had uh, the ability to work together. And uh, the cow meeting on October 8th, where we, uh, it wasn't a very long one because of some attendance issues. But uh, busy times, lots of good things are happening, uh, lots of questions, lots of things to work towards. Thank you. Councilor uh, Paul. Okay, just furthermore, uh, like <laughs> Councilor White said, uh, we attended the G4 um, being that night. I think everybody enjoyed and, and learned lots about the Legacy Committee and so on and so forth. Um, plan to, uh, we were supposed to have a RISE meeting that night, so that's postponed until later on this month. Um, Swan Valley, we met with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee in regards to the grant a few times and um, gone through some things, but they put a lot of work and effort, I think, into getting this ready. Uh, we attended this one more town hall meeting, um, which also, uh, I think, I think there needs to be a little bit, we could have had more explanation. Um, I don't know if I got everything out of it that I had in, thought I would get out of it. So, uh, the library, of course, is, um, things are going well. We met with, met with them and, uh, Lots of things happening there. Lots of uh, with the new library in there. Lots of things happening, and and lots of great things coming out of there right now. So um, CMHA, their AGM minutes there. And Swan Valley Interagency meets on October seventeenth. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Medwood. Can you hear us? Can you uh, do your report? <coughs> It's not the greatest of sound, but hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, we can um, hear you. I attended the G4, G8 meeting, the CAL meeting. I also had a Swamp Valley Communities That Care meeting. Our youth survey that we're collaborating with the school division on, I believe it's November 28th. It's in that last week in November there that that will be taking place. Uh, there's uh, quite a few new questions compared to the, uh, I think it was done in 2018, 2019, the last time it was done, but majority of the questions are the same, so it allows for that comparable data from one survey to the next. Uh, we're also looking for a program coordinator for Swan Valley's communities, communities that care, so if there's anybody interested in that, there should be a posting coming out in the near future, possibly in today's paper, I haven't looked. And I also attended the Prairie Mountain Health Harm Reduction Meeting. I found it um, quite interesting that three very well-respected doctors from our community attended. Uh, one of them, of course, has moved on to become the uh, Chief Medical Officer for the province. Uh, but it's kind of stuck with me, the fact that they mentioned that for people who are not using the harm reduction supplies, it can cost upwards of sixty dollars to $80,000 per day, I believe they said to receive medical treatment and they can be hospitalized for up to eight weeks for that treatment. So a counselor from one of the RMs actually questioned the validity and cost effectiveness of providing a treatment center here in the community so that we might be able to treat the disease versus the symptoms and there was a resounding yes from the lo local doctors that we absolutely have the conditions that would warrant or justify having a treatment center in the community. So it would really be nice if as a collective of the municipalities, we can be advocating to our Minister of, well, Minister of Health, as well as our Minister of Housing Addictions and Homelessness to see if we can't make that happen for our community so that we can start treating the disease versus the symptom. And then that may also help in the trickle down with dealing with the uh, inappropriately discarded needles and whatnot. Of course, housing 
is also a big concern and issue that needs to be addressed in our, our community as well. Okay, is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a little bit of a report from uh, Swan Lake Watershed. Uh, currently, we're implementing a three-year, uh, we're on the third year of the Prairie Watershed Climate Program. Uh, it focuses on greenhouse gases, emission reduced from nitrogen management. Uh, you're looking at $840,000 that's implemented into the valley. The Grow and Center Program for 2024 is a conservation of sensitive wetland, ripland, riparian areas, woodlots, grassland. For the next 10 years, we'll come out to $212,000. External funding for repairing and enhancement projects is about 250,000. Uh, we have seven stream bank stabilization projects on the go right now. We have two grass waterway projects that have been completed. We have two repairing and fence projects so livestock can access the water. We have also one pasture pipeline project that uh, supplies water to the livestock over 11 quarter sections. Two livestock crossing projects to be completed yet. And we do 150 water samples from six sampling sites across the valley from April to October. So we did with that, on September 25th and 27th, both Eddie and Linnea were invited to Winnipeg at the Bruce Campbell Research Facility through the UMM of Agriculture in a classroom to educate close to 800 students. So hats off to them for uh, their very on all this stuff in there and the university understands them. Uh, just one other thing, just probably food for thought for administration and speaking with a, a local business owner, quick stop there, right where you put the water line in there, there was talk, maybe a thought should be put into another driveway on that, extend one way or the curb's out now, so I'll put that in your plates to see if it's even feasible. Also talking with another business owner on the end of ninth there that is doing the heavy truck repairs now. The town has knocked a curb out for him to make his own driveway, but I think, and again, my personal opinion is there should be looked into the end of ninth to get uh, a road allowance in there. So those both properties on either side would have a road, like just a gravel road, instead of the heavy trucks coming onto that. So it's something, like I said, just food for problems. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Bobick, and uh, or, uh, just a side note, uh, glad to see you here, and everything is good with you, and uh, I'm moving along in the right direction. Where is it? <clears throat> uh, Councilor Boychuk. Uh, so yeah, following on, uh, October 7th, we had the G4 meeting. Um, it was, it was nice to see the individuals that were in attendance. I guess it was disappointing to see a lot that weren't, and it's a ongoing theme I think I keep bringing up uh, after each one of them I think we all need to be in attendance in order for it to actually uh, work and to do the most beneficial or have the most beneficial outcome for all our municipalities if we're all in attendance no matter what's going on or, or, or what's happening uh, just want to put that out there um, October 8th we had our uh, Committee of the Whole, which was, yes, very short, uh, and uh, October 10th the harm reduction meeting, and I guess I'm just going to reiterate one thing that I had said during that meeting. Uh, I think the main thing, uh, the point was missing that the harm reduction has its mandate for the medical uh, field and the impl impl implications that their program is supposed to assist with that way, but it is causing harm to our community, and that's that's where we need to try and figure out and work with them and fix that uh, issue. And like I had brought up in that meeting, it's less than one percent of the population, and it's causing a lot of trouble and and havoc and you know distension in the community for for quite a very small amount of individuals. Um, and a lot of money is getting spent on on that so I just uh, there's there's a lot that needs to be done in that uh, retrospect there um, we also had a meeting with the legacy committee and the recreation committee we did a huge uh, review of the GICB grant uh, 
portion that we were putting in and uh, I know Clayton Holchuk and uh, CA Pool and I'm sure CF Oganita has been working uh, considerably to pull the information and get everything in that we need to get in. This is a huge undertaking and uh, thank JCI for their assistance with that and uh, crossing our fingers and hoping for all the best out of that. There are two more grants that we are going to be looking into applying for and we've already uh, been tossing around the emails and requesting the information so that we can get started on those. The next one uh, the deadline is November 15th and then the other one is open. Um, and then I also did attend the CMHA AGM as well. And that's everything for you. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Deputy Mayor Morial. Um, I guess we're quite a few meetings this period. Uh, the number of uh, meetings again with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee and the Rec uh, Committee regarding the grant. Uh, we're on the periphery of uh, just keeping up the breast and having my thoughts where it be, but a lot of work going into those grants, uh, not only by the Legacy Committee, but admin staff at Johnson Controls that uh, was under the pressure to uh, prepare that uh, grant submission for us, uh, get it in by tomorrow's deadline. So. Uh, hopefully we uh, bear the fruits of that work. Uh, October 7th was the G4, G8 meeting. Uh, besides what was said uh, already, one of the takeaways there is that there's going to be an inventory of the municipalities to put together um, the requirements for some type of contract or admin work position to be shared amongst all the municipal ad hoc, I guess, type committees like medical services, vet board, those <coughs> types of things for administrative support for that. So we're putting together a, um, an inventory of how that will look and how much work is actually required. Then October 8th, a short cow meeting. October 9th, uh, as previously reported, the medical services met with Dr. Ola regarding uh, floating the idea of incentive packages or an incentive idea for international graduates that have completed their four-year contract uh, with training and now they're basically free agents uh, looking to go uh, set up practice somewhere. So, uh, October 10th um, was a community safety well-being uh, <coughs> meeting there. It was very short, just a touch base meeting. Morning of October 10th uh, was a Provincial Justice Advisory Committee uh, meeting. While well, a lot of the contents of that meeting are confidential, uh, I can say that there is a significant movement on a number of files that the committee has been working for on uh, similar uh, bylaws throughout the province and its enforcement uh, with community safety well-being and cost allocation and funding for police services in the province of Manitoba. So stay tuned on that file. Um, and then again on October 10th, uh, in the evening, the uh, town hall meeting with Prairie Mountain Health. Uh, a lot has been said on that, but uh, as the more this discussion goes on and more you dig into it, it there's multiple layers that are, have to be pulled apart. It's going to be a very big conversation and a, almost a big project to uh, come to some agreements and deal with this issue. It's not just as simple an idea there's going to be multiple layers where there's multiple projects multiple entities that are working together on various projects that have to uh, work in conjunction so um, as we're finding out uh, when you deal with one it may have positive or negative effects with another agency so you have to pull all those layers back together and have those frank and open conversations to move forward so, and that's all okay uh, for me just as busy as everybody else I've been in this last couple of weeks. Um, uh, to begin with, I guess uh, I was uh, attending my uh, AMM board meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just to kind of take a few takeaways <coughs> that, that may be of interest would be the, um, the cannabis and the, the problems moving forward with legislation or extending legislation allowing uh, homeowners to be able to have, uh, I guess, goal. Poor plants in, in homes, and the question had been is who's going to police this, and and certainly it was not going to be the municipalities. Definitely, uh, what the government is hearing from AMM, the uh, municipalities are not going to be policing this sort of thing with our bylaw office and all that. So that's yet to be uh, determined, but that's the position I can say that is coming from uh, AMM. Um, 
uh, there's a lot of other stuff with um, uh, aquatic invasive species and, and how that's uh, being monitored or tested you know, from lakes across the province is a big issue and it seems to be becoming more of an issue as, as uh, we hear uh, going forward. Um, trade show and, and the convention this fall uh, on the 25th, as I mentioned before, a few weeks ago, or a, lot, a week ago, I guess I should say. Um, everybody, I think, from council is attending, and so it'll be uh, a very full convention again, uh, as well as um, they talked about the Canada housing infrastructure for municipalities, and that was, I mentioned last week, about a 40% contribution I think it is from municipalities so I think we're under review with that right now but it may not be necessarily a, a thing for us I think uh, council for let me attend the retail council of Canada's uh, uh, I guess you could say retail summit that they held uh, uh, sponsored by the several sponsors but for, uh, initiated I think, from the province of Manitoba to talk about crime and, and this was a full out day talking about a lot of the issues uh, that uh, we're dealing with here locally and, uh, and what the province is working on. I heard a lot of stuff on what they're doing in the city of Winnipeg and downtown the city of Winnipeg, but they really never went into what are they doing in rural parts of, of the province. And so that's some of the things that we'll be pushing forward with the uh, the Minister of Justice and, and the Justice Department, but uh, that's a big part of it. But they did touch base on a lot of the stuff that you know we're all thinking, you know, the community in, in, included. And I know there was a, a former Chief Justice there, and he talked about how people have lost a lot of confidence in the law and, uh, and what the law is doing uh, as far as if you want to put people away for whatever acts they've done. But, you know, um, they, they prosecute people by, you know, by the law and they follow the law. So there definitely has to be some, some change there, I think, in, in the, you know, time going forward. The one thing that I, I thought about was the, the community impact of, of individuals and how we were promised that we would have a voice as far as releasing somebody into your community that has an impact if it's individuals uh, if it's retailers or whomever and i don't think that this is working so or has been work because i think that there has been people released back to our community that that i think that we would have like to have a voice of to say we don't want these individuals back to in our community so i think that we need to get together and and uh, form a letter to uh, the minister and to perhaps uh, uh, justice to say, you know what, this is this is you were supposed to, you know, promise that. Uh, I also believe that the premier made a stance last year when he said he was going to get tough on crime and individuals that were distributing or selling of drugs, if you however you want to call it. And uh, I don't think that that's happening yet. And we need to, to uh, clamp down on that. Um, there was a lot more about the whole thing, including protecting your, uh, your property by cameras, uh, having proper cameras and so on, sharing with some of that stuff that we talked about with the, with the, uh, um, the Chamber of Commerce in the last year and how much investment we had with the Chamber of Commerce and how local businesses need to take advantage of, of uh, you know, uh, some of those uh, connections and sharing and, and protecting their property. Um, the minister announced that there had been 30% increase in shoplifting in the province of Manitoba. And there was an 18% in robbery in the province of Manitoba. So these stats are some of the largest in the, in the country as far as some of the crime goes. So that's a uh, pretty uh, uh, big thing. But you know what, there was, uh, I, I was happy to see that the, at this summit there was a lot of people that actually are part of business that were there. There was not a ton of elected people that were sitting in the room. There were, a lot of them were um, uh, people that um, are just everyday people like us who run businesses or try to protect our, our pop, uh, properties and so forth. <clears throat> we'll see more on the, um, the crime strategies that the province has. They said that they're going to be releasing some of that from that uh, show that they're the, I guess traveling around the province in the spring. We'll hear some of that, I'm thinking probably in the next couple of weeks. 
and hopefully we'll hear some of those, it's those initiatives uh, moving forward. The other part of the, the last couple of weeks I've consumed, well, actually more than the last couple of weeks, but mainly in the last couple of weeks, and that is on the needle distribution and harm reduction and, and, uh, and what's happening in our community. And I spoke with countless members of the press on uh, issuing our concerns, and, I, and I, I've told them all the same thing when I talked to them. I said, you know what, I might have a different opinion about how the community uh, deals with this or how we listen or how we relay the message to the provincial government. But we here as council, we are elected people of the people of the community. They tell us that we are the closest voices to the people of the community and the, and the, and the rate payers. It is our job to bring the message that we receive from them to the government. And, and this council has resolutions that has passed and we follow as a team moving forward. Um, there was um, uh, some mention about uh, different programs and all that that they could look at, but this is, is a big thing. And I've received tons of different letters from individuals. I got some here tonight. I just got a text here earlier from people that are very concerned about what harm reduction is doing to our community. And I don't think that we can take those messages lightly. I've not, and I'll be honest with you, I've not received one letter from anybody telling me that they think that uh, needle distribution is a great thing in our community, especially the way it is right now. And, and I've had messages from other mayors from other uh, parts of, of the country. I've received emails from individuals from universities in Calgary and, and all over the place saying, we need to keep pushing this issue forward because a lot of communities have not been doing this and we need to do this as a community and find the right answers to what works for us and others so people are watching us to see. I know that the AMM executive today, they had spoke with the minister and, uh, and I know the minister said that there will be some communications and whatever we can to work together on this important topic moving forward and maybe have a chance to, to speak at the convention at the end of November. But this has definitely um, consumed uh, a lot of our time and energy and I know that people are listening and, and we're hearing different voices or opinions or, or what's happening as from uh, coming out of the August the 6th meeting. But I think that um, we're on the right track and, and you know, like we're not saying that we're a bunch of heartless people, but we have to remember that we have people in our community that they they deserve safety too. And, and this is about their safety as much as anybody else's too. So we want to have a safe community and we need to keep working on where we're going with this. And I think that's it. I know that tomorrow the Sharps Committee uh, is having a meeting tomorrow. I've been invited to attend that on behalf of the town of Swan River. Uh, I'll ask maybe in our next meeting if the council will pass a resolution to give uh, my blessing to be a part of that and then we will uh, see where we go from there. So there's a lot more in my mind about that but that's kind of puts it in a nutshell but it's we've all been he hearing and talking about this for a long time and we know what our thoughts are and we know our community's thoughts and we know that Prairie Mountain Health uh, has said, and we've suggested it last week, that they need to hold a town hall meeting that includes all members of the community, retail, elected, non-elected, and, and people that just live in the community. Let them uh, have a chance to voice their opinions because voicing them to us really doesn't do much as far as us just relaying back that message, and it's the same message. I think it's the best way for anybody to hear what people have to say is give them the chance to speak and that's what uh, democracy is all about so anyway a quick muttering on that and uh, I'll let CEO Poole uh, uh, give his report on uh, as per as on the agenda I can answer <coughs> any questions on the written report on the agenda just to highlight the hitters that we're spending hours on the clerical staff search continues uh, dealing with some HR issues in the office. Uh, the AML, the uh, meeting request went out to RCMP and we're just drafting up the minister letters so council should see that shortly through email. Uh, a lot of hours being spent on the GICB application which will go in early tomorrow morning. Uh, dealing with the FIPA request 
and I did have time to look into the uh, Canada Housing Infrastructure Grant, so that can be a discussion on an upcoming CAL. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Just my, I attended the PMH meeting last week as well, and I think from a high level, uh, you know, the <coughs> what I took away was they want education to be their number one goal and, and an understanding. I think with what's happened in Swan River, they've you know, with putting up 500,000 needles and not having anything on the back end to deal with that has caused closed ears. I think uh, I don't think anyone's saying that they shouldn't be doing harm reduction, but the current situation is fighting the, the foundation to understand. So that's what I got out of that. And I wanted to add, for, I, I think it's important that uh, there's many people that asked me about uh, the, that meeting with Prairie Mountain Health and why uh, our First Nations uh, and, and MMF were not in, uh, attending the meeting. It was the choice of Paramount Health not to invite them. I think it was their thoughts of having a separate meeting entirely. But when I spoke to the chiefs, they, they thought that they would like to be in attendance. But Chief Janai made it very clear to me he does not, and their council does not agree with harm reduction the way that it is right now. And they actually had passed a resolution saying that they did not want to have needle distribution in their community. So, and he asked me actually to report on that on his behalf. So, there you go. All right, so then we'll move on to 8 and 8.1. Whereas medical radiation technologists are an essential link between patients and the sophisticated medical imagery, imaging and radiotherapy technologies in of a healthcare system. And whereas the town of Swan River recognizes the vital contributions of medical radiation technologists to safe and appropriate healthcare in this province, and whereas other healthcare providers depend on the specialized skills and expertise of medical radiation technologists to ensure patients receive timely diagnosis and treatment, and whereas the medical Radiation Technologist, Technologist Week is an opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the expertise and dedication of medical radiation technologists, as well as to encourage others to enter this vital profession. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mary Lance Jacobson, proclaim and declare that November the 3rd to the 9th, 2024, shall be known as Medical Radiation Technologist Week within the town of Swan River. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. All in favor? Oh, uh, Councillor Medwood. Medwood, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Just want to know if I should be speaking. <laughs> Sorry? Um, I just have a question. In addition to this resolution for recognition of our. Um, radiation technologist is there any chance that the medical recruitment and retention committee will be doing up little packages like they did similar for the health care aides i guess they, they can have that discussion at one of their meetings yeah i guess yeah. the chair is there you can uh great idea okay any further discussion all in favor? It's carried. Councillor Medwood, your hand is still up. Okay, it's gone. Um, you print that and sign and have me sign it and then we send it to them so they know that we have that proclamation. Yep. Okay, thank you. 8.2. Resolve that a UV Swift 4L12 be purchased from Trojan Technologies for a cost of $127,330 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boycha. Discussion? Now you can go. You have some uh, comment? Yeah, I was just going to let uh, or just publicly state it so. This is a unit that was uh, purchased in uh, 2003, and it works with the chlorine in conjunction with the chlorine to disinfect the water or the potable water, and uh, it is part of our uh, 
uh, license to have it operating uh, for 95% of the water that we produce in a month. And uh, the current one we have is still working, but it is uh, no longer being manufactured, so that's harder to get parts. So this would be um, the newest model, so that would be easy to source parts for it. And, uh, to essentially fit into the same housing that is currently there so there wouldn't be any piping work required. Okay. And this falls with the utility for any member of council that is not too sure about that. So okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Eight point three. Whereas the town of Swan River has engaged Johnson Control Incorporated, JCI. As per resolution 2024-0396 to assist the building of a professional application to the federal government's green and inclusive community building program. And whereas the application document is complete, therefore be resolved, the town of Swan River approved the submission of an application to the federal government's green inclusive, green and inclusive community buildings program. Moved by Councillor. Wojciech, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Um, Councillor uh, Medwood, I've not seen your hand come up there, so I don't know if you're trying to vote or you're just uh, abstaining from all votes. I'll raise it when I'm in opposition. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> 10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows we here by proof for payment. General accounts checks number 32108 to number 32142, totaling $65,344.44 is listed in Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5496 to number 5499. Totaling $95,313.38 is listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $29,867.36 is listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I just have one question. Item number 321. Yeah, 32139, the Swan River Kinsman Club, uh, the grant for the lobster fest tables and chair rental. Did we invoice them for the full amount and then write them a check for the amount of um, the in lieu grant? Is that why that's showing up that way? They have to pay and then we reimburse. So I don't have the documents in front of me, but uh, yes, they would have to pay the, the cost and then we grant them. But I can confirm that. Okay. Anything further? Councilor That's everything for me. Okay, thank you. Councillor Powell. I think only have uh, 32121, which is a Cisco. Can we answer that now yeah. if there's just That's, one? Uh, janitorial supplies for pool, arena, and hall. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that the municipality may pull supplementary taxes, and subsections 306 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from natural assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on October the 4th be made to the 2024 property tax roll with the resulting increases totaling $110.50 and resulting reductions totaling $30.54. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry 10.3. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the 
fees and charges for the works under Clause 252.1a of the Act, whereas the Town of Swan River has issued penalties to owners of property for violating bylaws 21, 21 uh, 2022, 6, 2023, 8, 2023, and 1, 2024, but the Municipal Act, Subclause 236.1b.3 provides uh, provides may be provides may be collected in any manner in which a tax may be collected or enforced under the Act, and where a su sufficient time ha has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling four thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and eighty eight cents. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding tax roll and collected in that manner. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the, the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective November the 1st, 2024. Moved by uh, Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Questions? Go ahead, uh, Councillor White. Question. <laughs> I see this one, uh, IBC-24136, uh, in fact, the charge was $3.94, and uh, now it's added to the tax roll. Is that, that 3908 is, is that the tax roll number, or is that the dollar sign? Uh, that's the tax I came in looking at this late. Where, where, say that again. I, 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 IBC number 24136, on, uh, $157 on sightly property mitigation, charged $3.94, total of 161, add to tax 3900 Is that the number now? Is that 3000 4000 in fact. Well, it's definitely not the roll number. We see the roll number. Uh, well, CFO, give me a, can you respond to that? Good question. Uh, the, the amount that's added to the particular tax roll, 119100, is the total of the uh, $200, $200, $336, $3,078, and $161.44. Those are all for the same property. So we've got a, a person that's in uh, the rear is $3.94, and so now it's $3,900. Somehow it seems to be something that's getting away on us, so that maybe that's that's a charge. No, Three ninety four is a is a is a charge. A right. There's See. several line items that add up to that. Yeah. So the to the three thousand. So when yeah. they get, is there a magic number? When they so, get to that number, we say so we got, we got to collect it, or what do we do? So council white, if you look at if you look at this on the, the second charge, okay, it says fine one hundred January twenty six two hundred dollars, yeah. and then it keeps going down. Which includes another two hundred, a three twenty, a two thousand nine hundred and thirty-seven, and then there's a hundred and fifty-seven, uh, and I think that's where it ends. Then you go across and it adds up all of them, and that's where you get your total from all those. Okay. Well, it's a total of all of them. Yes. The all, all, all of the ones in that line or those a lines. It's misleading. Well, no, it's just. Yeah. That's why you asked what it was for earlier, right, eh? <laughs> sir? Thank you. That makes sense, though. But you had another question, though. Well, is, is, when do we reach a time when they say they, hey, enough of this already? Uh, we don't. We don't have a set time. Let's see if we're going to. I, I guess if he has a set time, I don't know about it. We don't have a policy on that. But if they if they've given what admin believes is sufficient time, and they don't pay, we add it to taxes because the bylaw allows us to. Pay. This is five thousand dollars. Thank For, you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Where subsections 169.5 of the Municipal Act provide that a council may authorize an expenditure for an amount not provided in an operating budget or capital budget and may fund the expenditure by transfer from a municipality's accumulated surplus or its reserve funds. And whereas subsections 169.7 states no public or public hearing is required 
or an expenditure funded by a transfer from a specific purpose reserve unless the expenditure is for a purpose other than for which the reserve fund was established. And whereas the town of Swan River reserve for reserve for uh, rental tables and chairs has a balance of ten thousand eight hundred thirty-four dollars and twenty-six cents as of August thirty-first, two thousand twenty-four, and tables and chairs have been purchased at a cost <coughs> net of GST of ten thousand three hundred seventy-one and eighty-five cents. Therefore, be it resolved that the ten thousand three hundred seventy-one and eighty-five cents be transferred from the reserve reserved for rental tables and chairs to the general operating fund for the purchase of table and chairs for special event sales. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I see, and it's confirmed in this resolution that this wasn't part of the budget discussion. And so I would like to know, like, how did this decision come about to purchase these tables or pardon chairs um, and then the decision to fund that through the reserve without coming from council first or the committee um, okay. go ahead i think i'd have to defer to cfo Ganita. actually some of this stuff was in the works before i started i think it was just work catching up with itself because it's my understanding that we created a table of chairs uh, reserve to replace broken and outdated tables and chairs as they go through instead of out of general when there's no funds there. So I just see if all we need it, you have uh, it's been deferred to you. I, I was told that these tables and chairs would be purchased and that be using the reserved for rental tables and chairs and then the invoice came in so there was the resolution to transfer from the reserve. Have they been purchased? Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilor Midwood, and then we'll come back to that if there's going to need to be more discussion on that. Go ahead. Uh, my question was going to be where's the difference coming from? Because the amount on the invoice is, I think it's something like 10,000. Uh, just wait one second. 108652 is the total due, but we're only transferring 10,300 and something out of the reserve. So where's the difference? For the cost coming from? The town will be claiming the GST back from the government account. So the resolution states the amount of net of GST. Okay. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Okay, just where are these tables and chairs going? To the hall? They're, they're um, in the egg shed right now, and they're just for rental. For, we rent lots of tables and chairs for events and weddings, and and lots of the, from what I understand, a lot of the other ones are broken and wrecked and need to be replaced. So what I understand, this has been in the works for a couple of years, so if we miss bringing something to council, my apologies, I just... Yeah, it would have to be, it would have to go on your capital. It would have to yeah. be a capital project. Yeah, I wasn't aware. I don't know. It was just something I think I kind of inherited. It was in the works, and my apologies if we missed something. Okay. Uh, so we, we, how we'll handle it, we can have a report of exactly what happened and bring that to council. Yeah. Okay. Please, because that's like it's a learning uh, experience there. Because I was also told there's some new uh, fancier chairs for the hall, Veterans Hall, that were purchased. Uh, Ms. Graham had, had let me know because uh, it was my understanding that even the, the ones that we have that are out in the ag sheds are basically we use them until they're gone because we're looking for an avenue of getting out of the table and chair rent, rental business um, and this reserve was specifically set up for the uh, white tables and nice new black chairs that we had got for the veterans hall when we started replacing those a number of years ago so 
So they did purchase, we got an invoice that we need to pay. Uh, that's, that's one matter, but I think we need to, uh, especially when we get reserve amounts or purchases intended to come out of reserves that's not in the financial plan, that needs to come through this table first before an order is put. Yeah. Yeah, expect a report. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Just a comment. I this will be the first I've heard of us getting out of the table and chair business. We actually do a lot of this. Hence why we were looking for more tables and chairs to replace the broken ones we had. We're one of the only places to wrap tables and chairs in the community and we do a lot of business with this. So uh, I, I clearly have to go and dig out some more information because I'm at a loss of this whole conversation. Traditionally, we give a lot of free tables and chairs, hence why the whole grant process is reevaluated and stuff like that. Yeah, part of it, but we, we I don't know, if, you know, we could get you numbers on how much we actually do in rentals, too. Okay, thank you. So, the discussion? I was just, I know with the fire hall, like, was there like a minimum, too? Like, that doesn't need to be approved like five thousand and under, right? Is that for right? purchasing? Yeah. No, technically, managers have twenty five to ah, twenty thousand. Okay, it was just maybe for the fire hall. But the, the issue is there's nothing in the financial plan. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, uh, we don't have anything in here, so uh, start with members' privilege. Uh, we'll start with Councilor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I had a little extended holiday, so I haven't really got too much time. I'd like to personally thank the people at the hospital here, the compassion and, and stuff that they do every day. Until you're there, you never see it. But along with that, you can see they worry about you and they worry about a lot of people in there. So hats off to all those people. Just to make mention that I probably had somewhere between, I'm gonna say between six and 10 emails congratulating council, thanking council for the root of the harm reduction and homelessness which we were taking. So just to put that out there. And that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Mike. Just a couple of things. One, a, a, a bit of a concern. I think I have to chastise myself. The, uh, our Indian community, our East Indian community, uh, celebrated Navratri uh, on September 4, I believe it was. And I never made it there. And uh, I don't know, 20, 30 families, business families with the children in our community. And they invited our community. And I apologize for not attending. I, I hope I was doing something quite important for me not to make it. So. Next year when that comes again, I, I hope council uh, talks about it prior to it and maybe we can do a presentation for all we know saying thank you to that community for their contrib contributions to us. Uh, recently I had uh, I took the opportunity as chair of the Protective Service Committee to meet with two of the managers of uh, our larger businesses, uh, Dr. Dillon uh, from Giant Tiger and Ken Roche from No Frills. I says, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the other way around. Speed it up? No, the other way around. Whatever. Uh, the managers of uh, Tim Roche is at No Frills, no. and uh, Dylan is at Giant Tiger. No. Other way around. Okay, I'm close. <laughs> I talked to both of those guys. Sorry. And both men, uh, to the to the man, were relatively, they were happy with their RCMP treatment. See, the members don't always make it. They know there's other issues taking place. They know they have limited numbers of people. They're very generally very happy. When they didn't make it, they tried to get in touch with them. They did something to try to touch base with the RCMP members after. So I was I was pretty happy to, to hear that because some of the things I see on that WhatsApp app that it's not happening. But the two senior managers said that uh, they said do the job, appreciate the support. They understand the uh, difficulties of RCMP with their staffing, uh, but they have a concern with the repeat offenders issues where the guys uh, do some bad bad stuff and they get out again sooner. So. That was the only concern that they really had. Uh, the the uh, paid commercials, uh, uh, Thursday the 17th, this Thursday, the Manitoba Federation is opening an open uh, public meeting to people of all age, gender, 
ethnicity, to talk about hunting and fishing expectations in Manitoba. That starts at 7 at the Veterans Hall. I think it'd be worth attending. And November the 9th, the Small Valley Outdoors is having their uh, sixth annual dinner, and we have raised over, you guys have raised over $30,000 spent in the valley in that period of time. I think it's more. It's higher. It's maybe $300,000. Yeah, you're probably close. Uh, 300000 Yes. At DU, I was a member, a charter mm -hmm. member. I think we put $5,000 in the valley in 40 years, so a million dollars out. And these guys have spent, uh, your, our community has spent uh, 300000 It's a wonderful dinner, prime rib. I encourage people who'd like a ticket, talk to me, and I'll pay to find uh, your worship. Uh, I'll just remind you, Council White, uh, put your pen down when you're talking because the clicking is hard for the people that are listening on the other side. So. Uh, but thank you, uh, Councilor Powell. Okay, so just, um, just a couple notes. Um, just a couple of congratulations on uh, the volleyball tournament that was held this weekend at the, at the regional high school. Um, our junior varsity um, team came in second in the seniors' uh, in a seniors tournament, so uh, we had teams from all over. We had teams from Thompson, Gumbaugh, Dauphin. Um, so they did very well in that. Um, also, I, I guess uh, um, we had some. Uh, we had stamps. Stamps played this past weekend there. Um, we also had. Uh, uh, we also have um, the Tigers. Tigers game that's going to be starting up here soon. They're, they're going to be starting their, their hockey. We also have the U18s uh, coming in from Thompson this weekend too to play this, this coming weekend. Um, uh, other things, uh, I guess I just I would like to just make a congratulations to uh, Leslie Sum Sumlet, who is now the new executive director of the Albert Short Friendship Center, and just wish her all the best in that role. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Meglin. Oh. Um. Uh, I just have uh, two things actually. I'm not sure. Um, Councillor Powell kind of cut out there for me, um, so I don't know if she mentioned Spooktoberfest this weekend, but it is uh, Friday and Saturday night. Um, Thank you. And uh, just a reminder that the Community Safety Wellbeing Survey, although we kind of stopped advertising at the end of the month, it is still available and accessible. So if you know people who have not. Uh, make the time to fill it out, it will still be available for a while. Um, once they generate the data from the amount that we have in now, um, they will will review it as the core group and determine whether or not it is a, uh, I guess an adequate representation of the diversity within our community. And if there's, uh, if we, feel that we're lacking from certain demographics, then we will probably do another approach at how to get information from those demographics. So the survey will continue to be available, it's just we're not necessarily promoting it or advertising it at the moment. That's everything? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Um, yeah, so just, I guess, along with that harm reduction conversation uh, stating before that there's multiple layers but we are being watched uh, closely by a significant amount of municipalities throughout Manitoba and elsewhere um, as how this goes because it is a, a very emotional and passionate uh, topic uh, for individuals and I for myself and I can assure of rest of uh, us council we're not purpose but it, I was encouraged to hear at our meeting that uh, from PMH that said that uh, and acknowledged that public safety is more important than actually delivering harm reduction. Harm reduction is a close second, but public safety was taking takes precedence uh, with an acknowledgement that they do have to acknowledge on the unused needle uh, improper disposal that's going on that has to be addressed so um, like I said before there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna have some very frank and open conversations but uh, hopefully we at the end of the day we can uh, um, address some of these issues that we do have in our town um, along with probably the supports that has been identified by the medical professionals here in the valley 
where uh, yes, we can give out uh, certain aspects of harm reduction uh, with the needle um, supplies and, and whatnot, but it's all for naught if you're not giving the proper um, treatments and programs to get off the uh, substances that they're on. So, uh, so hopefully uh, through our teamwork here, we'll be able to have those conversations with uh, our partners in the province and PMH and move this uh, file forward where uh, we can have some amicable uh, solutions that are acceptable to uh, everybody. But uh, we are being closely watched by a lot of uh, municipalities and that have, like other councils, many have reached out to us going, uh, basically thanking us for starting that conversation because it was one of those where everybody was tipping around, doesn't know where to do. So uh, it's all the more, I guess, more pressure on us to deal with this properly and respectfully. Okay. How's it boy, Chuck? Pretty much everything I had on my list has been said, so I'll just maybe be more specific. Um, so this Thursday and next Thursday, the U15 team has games here in the community. And like uh, Council Powell mentioned, the AAA U18 Rangers have games this Saturday at 7 and uh, Sunday at 1 o'clock, where they will be taking on the Norman North Stars. And the local players on the team are Alex Campbell, Trace Langan, Ben Poole, and Dason Martin. So uh, I'm sure they would love to have their community come out and cheer them on. Um, then we have Spooktoberfest on Friday and Saturday, the 18th and 19th. And then the Stampeders have home games here Friday, October 25th, and Saturday, October 26th. Then the SVRSS Tigers have their home opener on Sunday, October 27th at 1.30. And that's it for me. Uh, yeah, and then the 26th, 27th, hang on, better double check the date. It's the 26th, Saturday, the October 26th is the uh, Halloween social that the Swan Valley Legacy Committee is putting on as a fundraiser for the, well, I don't think it's specific to that in the advertising, but obviously I'm pretty sure the proceeds are going to be going towards the arena or other projects that they're working on. Uh, their advertising is phenomenal for it, like the... the um, like poster? Yeah, like the yeah the poster on it actually is kind of like interactive or moves, so I was, I was pretty impressed with that, like they're going all out here, so uh, if you want to come down, uh, I'm sure they have some support tickets around there too if you can't make it. So there's some people that are not overly public people will buy those support tickets. So if you want, they're available at the Star and Times. Now that's everything for me. Very good. Yeah, that Halloween dance must be a big thing because I, I've been hearing about it in our household and, and my daughter who had to go back to school from uh, Thanksgiving has to come back that weekend <laughs> just for that event, bringing some of her new university friends that she met to our home. So anyway, this is going to be interesting, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> life changes, right? Uh, I think everything like uh, has been said already. But one thing uh, I wanted to say again is the uh, the Maple Grove disc golf that we have down in Legion Park, and it's most of the signs are already up from their sponsors, and uh, the discs are or the baskets are in place. Go down and check it out. I believe that the rec department still has still has uh, some discs that you can go and borrow and use and go and check out the the sport. Uh, it's not as easy as you might think it is, and I think it's harder than the actual game of golf <laughs> to, to learn how to throw a, a disc, but uh, go check it out. And I, and I want to give kudos to the guys that put that together because that was really community-driven, a, a, a you know, thing that we can add value, add to our community. And uh, without people like that, that have you know, that vision and that dream, we wouldn't have some of these great things. So kudos to those guys. and. Uh, yeah, I get out there and check it out. So if we're going to do that, we should add uh, the, I believe it's boarding, contracting volleyball. Oh yeah, it's absolutely. It's volleyball yeah. works that we have. Maybe Director Clausen can speak to that. But. I'll give it out on her privilege. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, you already went once. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, I just asked a question for you. Are they still looking for sponsorship? 
agreement? No, I think it's okay. done. It's been paid for through the sponsorship. So okay, thank you. But you know what, if you want to support anything else, uh, you just let me know and I can help to funnel those uh, funds any way we possibly can. Well, my thoughts were that if there was a sponsorship open in town council, should maybe reach into their own pockets and sponsor them. I, I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Director Clausen. Uh, so I guess I'm talking about volleyball. Uh, yes, we opened up the volleyball court last month or so, and that was fully funded by Calvin Bordian's company. He gave us all the sand, and Swan Valley's community, Swan Valley Communities That Care, reimbursed us for uh, the net system, the volleyballs, uh, the outside borders, and... Poles. I think the poles are part of the net system. So um, I see people out there using it. So I see people like there a lot on of fun Sunday that playing volleyball. The court is regulation use for men's and women's and mixed and whatever you can think of. And the net moves up and down for different regulation heights. So we're hoping to do league volleyball next summer if council is interested in putting in a team. I'd <laughs> love to have you out there. We just have to pick a night to do it. Coach. <laughs> and uh, same with disc golf. We want to do a disc golf league night. Uh, another thing that's come our way is flag football. So that's a, a Kenny Monroe initiative, and he's going to help us kick it off the ground in May or so. So we'll be looking for teams for uh, flag football in the spring. Nice. Good. Um, one more thing. Uh, the social tickets we also have at the rink. So anybody coming down there this weekend, we've got some there. Um, and I think that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, Spooktoberfest, they're having the goulash building open again, and some on the trail, so it should be bigger than it has in the last couple years, so people should come down for an entertaining two evenings, it's Friday and Saturday this week. I hope that the weather is really good for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, CFO Ganita. That's the tour report. Okay, thank you. CL Pool. Uh, I was just going to mention Spooktober Spooktoberfest, but everybody uh, has talked about that. The theme is dolls, so if dolls freak you out, come on down. Are you dressing up as a doll this year? I have to, that's the theme. <laughs> uh, but I, I'd like to give a, a plug to the municipality of St. Rose. I was, I was there with family all long weekend, and they held their annual Hoof and Holler Days. So they had the rodeo, the parade, the social, the craft sale, and it's getting bigger than it was the last few years, so kudos to Robert and his team. They uh, put on a really good weekend. Woohoo! The hometown. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. <clears throat> Result of pursuits in sections 152-3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items will, that will be discussed are the CWSB uh, stakeholder consultation and the pool lawsuit. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in camera. 16.1. Whereas the town of Swan River legal team in regards to the Richardson Recreation Wellness Center construction issue lawsuits have uh, advised and requested an updated cost analysis on the unprepared issues listed in the 2018 KGS report. And whereas the review shall include a cost analysis and engineering review of all unfinished items not prepared in the 2018 KGS report. I honestly can't remember what KGS stands for. It's an uh, engineering firm, Kurt Mandis. Oh. It's three last names. Okay. In addition, it shall include any further issues for the town to review and prioritize, and whereas the work has a deadline of November the 25th to be completed, therefore be it resolved the town's water and engage Associated Engineering Limited to perform an updated cost analysis and review of the current condition of the building, also including the unrepaired items listed in the 2018 KGS building assessment. Moved by 
Officer Light, seconded by Computer Memorial. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.36 p.m. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. We are.